Are you frustrated with trading strategies that only seem to work after the fact? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you my Omni model. This model has helped me pass a funded account challenge, and I believe it can help you as well. I'll guide you through the seven steps of this model as we go over a trade that I actually took in the S&P 500. So stick around and see how you can apply this model in your own personal trading. All right, so we are in trading view and we're looking at the S&P 500. And you can see it, we have these arrows on the chart. These arrows are put on the chart by trading view. When you are in a trade, it's not something I can Photoshop or add to the chart. So this is just proving that this was a trade that I actually took. So it was a scalping trade. I was using the first version of my Omni model. And you can see that I sold at 55.50 and a quarter or three quarters. And I got out at 55.46 and three quarters. So it was a four point trade um, with two contracts. So that basically means that each point is worth a hundred dollars because one point of one contract is fifty dollars but because we have two it would be a hundred dollars so that would be a four hundred dollar move and i got in at 1042 and i was out by 1047 so four hundred dollars in five minutes but i don't really want you to focus on the money because it's all scalable you can have one contract you can have 10 contracts so it's all dependent on where you're at within your trading journey so one last thing i'm just going to toggle this so you can see executions toggle this on and off so that you can see that this is from trading view and not photoshop so now let's get into why i took this trade so let's take this off for a second and what we're going to do is go out to a five minute chart so what i have on the chart right here are these shaded areas so the blue shaded area is London open. That's going to be from 2 to 5 a.m. This is New York open. This is going to be from 7 to 9 a.m. in this asset class. And then we have the a.m. session, which is going to be for me 9.30 to 12. But I don't really like to take trades after 11.30. And then we have the p.m. session, which is from 1.30 to 3.45 for me. These are the times that I like to trade. So during the a.m. session, we can see that we made a high right here and then we went lower right we ended up going into these imbalances right here we had this very long wick and then price went higher to make a new high so we made a new high right here but i want you to notice and what i'm going to do is change it to blue i want you to notice how we made a new high but notice how the bodies do not go above the high right However, if we go to the NASDAQ 100, so we're looking at the S&P, a correlated market with the S&P is going to be NASDAQ. So if we go to the NASDAQ, now we can see this same swing high. Notice how the bodies do go above it, right? So on NASDAQ, bodies are going above it. But if we go back to the S&P, bodies are not going above that same swing high. So that is what we call a divergence in price, or as ICT calls it, smt divergence but it's a little bit different than your typical smt divergence because we're looking at the body so what i call this in my course and it's also free so you can get access to the entire course link is going to be in the description below but what i teach in the course is that this is what we call wick versus the body so there's three different types of smts we have wick versus wick so if the s p 500 was to not make a higher high and the nasdaq was to make a higher high that's the classic smt that many people are familiar with when it comes to ict concepts so that would be wick v wick the second one is going to be the one that we're talking about now which is wick v body and then the third one is going to be body v body and basically if the s p bodies were failing to go above here but on nasdaq the bodies did go above these bodies and neither of them took out the high but the NASDAQ bodies went higher, that would be your body v body SMT. So if you want a full detailed explanation of that concept and all the other concepts that I talk about, um, just go to the course, it's completely free. I will not charge you for that ever. So now that we have our SMT, let's go to the NASDAQ. So that's step one, we wanna see the SMT. Now the next step is once we have the SMT, now we're looking, or on the five minute chart first, what we're gonna do is measure our range. So this is during the AM session, right? So a simple target that we can have if we are gonna go short is going to be the lows of the previous session, which in this case would be the New York lows. So if we measure our FIB from low to high, and I have this preset already made, 
It's called the Market Maker XM, which is basically ICT's Market Maker model. And all it's doing is measuring, and I can better show you guys if I put it like that. So all it's doing is measuring 20 to 30% of the range, 50%, which is equilibrium, and then 70 to 80%, or you can call it the opposing 20 to 30%. So as ICT teaches, the highest probability setups are going to happen within 20 to 30% of that range. So the second step is finding 20 to 30% of the range once we find that on the five minute chart so this is the scalping model now we're going to go down to a one minute chart scroll over now what we're looking for is either a reclaimed order block or a breaker within 20 to 30 percent of that range so on nasdaq we have that right here and this would be our reclaimed order block right here and why is this the reclaimed order block because this is the last swing high that was taken out so we have these up close candles before this down move. This was initially a bearish order block. So as you can see, we my bad. We close closing below it. Then we go back into the order block. Also, we have a fair value gap and then price starts to go lower. Then we come back up into the order block, but it fails this time. So when we close below it again, we can expect price to reuse that order block because this isn't supply and demand. We aren't deleting levels after they've been used once we're going to extend them in our chart because they will be used again in the future because the algorithm that is delivering price does not forget about these areas of price. So that is our bearish reclaimed order block on the NASDAQ. We also have shifts in market structure when we take out this swing low. Why am I using this swing low? Well, let's delete this for a second. We have this fair value gap right here. And we are clearly within at least 50% of that fair value gap. So we have a swing low within a fair value gap and we've hit 50%. So we have our shift in market structure. So I just went through the third and the fourth step. So the third step was once we find the 20 to 30% of the range, we want to find that reclaimed order block or breaker. Now that we found that, now we want to see a shift in market structure. So that is the next two steps right there. But remember, NASDAQ is a little bit stronger because if we go to the five minute chart, the bodies went higher. So NASDAQ is a little bit stronger. So we want to be in the S&P 500. However, we just want this confirmation in the NASDAQ indicating to us on those smaller time frames that it's actually going to go lower because the divergence alone is not enough. That is why there's seven steps to the model. So going back to the S&P, boom. So now we're just going to do the same thing, measure from the low to the high, 20 to 30%, go down to your one minute chart. Once we are at the one minute chart and let's zoom in, we have our reclaimed order block right here. Boom. So we have our reclaimed order block. And then if we go to a, so first let's label this. So when we drop down, we know exactly what key levels are what, and let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So there goes our reclaimed order block within 20 to 30% of the range. After the divergence, we can drop down to now a 30 second chart. And on the 30 second chart, there we go. We have this swing low and the same thing with the NASDAQ. We have a fair value gap right here and I'll make it gray. And we have these two swing lows that clearly come within 50% of that fair value gap range. So when price takes out these lows right here, it's gonna take it out right here. As soon as price takes out that low, that is our market structure shift. So we're gonna label that market structure shift and let's just make it easier to read. So boom, there goes our market structure shift. Remember on the NASDAQ, it also confirmed to us that it wanted to go lower because it also had a market structure shift and it had closed below its reclaimed order block as well. So now moving on, what we're going to do is find our range where can we enter once price starts to trade back into that reclaimed order block so for this model we are using imbalances as our entry so most famous type of imbalance the easiest to spot is a fair value gap and that is the one that i use for this trade and i know i didn't explain exactly what the fair value gap is but basically notice how this candle's high doesn't touch the next next candle's low so not the very uh following candle so we have the then the following candle is this one, but then the next next candle is this. Notice how they don't touch each other at all. 
that is like a gap in price as what we call a fair value gap so the entry is going to be in a fair value gap in this case it can be any type of imbalances and i know this sounds like a plug for the course but i promise you it's not and it's also free but i teach all the different imbalances that i use in the course as well so if there's any terms that i talk about that you're unclear about or you're like what the hell is that just click the link in the description below go to the course and you can learn from there so moving on now where are fair value gaps so let's take this out fair value gaps once we have this market structure shift where can we trade back up into well we have fair value gaps here this candle low doesn't touch this guy however those fair value gaps are in what we call a discount so price is either always in a discount or in a premium and think about it if you were shopping at a store if you're shopping at a store you always want to buy at a discount however if you're, if you're the owner of the store and you're selling the products or goods you want to sell that stuff at a premium so the same thing applies with trading we always want to buy at a discount and sell at a premium and the way that we can visually see what a premium or a discount is is we take our range so we had this drop all the way down to here so we can measure from high to low and i have a preset called equilibrium so equilibrium is just 50 percent of the range from high to low anything below that is what we're going to call a discount and anything above that is what we're going to call a premium so that is how we visualize um, seeing discount versus premium notice how the bodies of this candle doesn't go above the high right so instead of using this swing high i'm going to actually use this swing high for my range now this is the equilibrium that we're using so then what we do is i have another preset optimal trade entry and i'm just going to show you the settings all it's doing and it's easier if i do percents and all it's doing is measuring 61.8 percent so right here 70.5 percent so right here and 79 percent so right here these three levels, this area, this range, whatever you want to call it, the algorithm many times will refer back to it. And it's what ICT calls optimal trade entry. So we have optimal trade entry here from this orange dotted line to that orange dotted line. And all I'm going to do is map that out. OTE right there. So we have optimal trade entry right there. And then equilibrium was the black dotted line right here. That was your 50%. So all I'm going to do is put that out there and then EQ and then just put a label on it so we don't get confused as to what lines mean what so for me I don't usually put the labels I know everything by the color because I've been doing this for so long I have certain colors that are just programmed in my head so like for equilibrium I usually have it as orange when it's drawn out or black when I use the fib tool but for the purpose of the tutorial we're gonna draw it out so we have equilibrium right here Remember, we want to be a seller because price is having that divergence up here and we're expecting price to start to reach for down here. Obviously, we can see in hindsight that it does go all the way down there. But this is what I'm thinking about in the time of the trade once I see the divergence. So because we want to be a seller, we want to sell at a premium. Remember, you always want to buy the discount, sell at a premium. So the entry has to be above equilibrium which is why these fair value gaps that i pointed out earlier would not be a good entry we want to use this fair value gap right here so if we measure that out boom so we have the fair value gap right there and let's actually make it a little bit bigger so that is our fair value gap so when price comes up into here that would be the ideal entry right here we also get another return to it right here. So anytime price is hitting this fair value gap, you can be a seller. This is the ideal entry. Also notice that it's aligning with optimal trade entry. We're within the reclaimed order block that is also within 20 to 30% of the range. So we have a lot of confluences happening for us. And all we're trying to do as traders is stack the probabilities in our favor. There is no model that's going to be 100%, but you're just trying to stack the probabilities in your favor. That is why there's so many different steps to the model. And it's not just a one step model because it's just not that easy. So this will be the ideal entry. Now what I'm going to do is put the execution tab on. 
so you can see exactly where I got in. So I got in right here because I just missed these entries. I wasn't looking at the chart at the time, but I happened to get in the chart and then price had this down close candle. So all I was looking at was these two up close candles right here. So we had these up close candles. I was treating that like a bullish order block. So when price came back up into the bullish order block after trading below it. So once we trade below these down close candles and flows below it, we treating, we're treating that like bearish order block. Price comes back up into that. That is why I sold short right here. And then all I was looking for was if my entry was going to be where it should have been with my stop loss being right here, where would a two to one risk to reward ratio be? So basically, whatever, however much I put in, however much I put for like my risk or whatever, far this price have to go before I make double that amount. That is what a two to one risk to reward ratio means. If it was three to one, then it's triple uh, whatever you put in. Two to one would be right here but all i was doing was aiming for this low right here and we had this fair value gap right here so once price took out this low that is when i wanted to be out the trade that's all i was doing for this trade i wasn't trying to hold it all the way down for here obviously you can see that it could the re another reason why i wasn't trying to hold was it's friday i was taking this trade on my phone um I just wanted to have a good example to show you guys this trade was taken in a paper trading account. It wasn't even taken in my funded account um, because I had just, I think the day before, two days before I was waiting for that funded uh, account to become live and active. So I was just trading on a paper trading, which is also like a demo account. So I just wanted to have a nice example showing the Omni model so that I can make videos like this for you guys. But what would I do if, let's say it was the live uh, account, I was in front of my computer, how would I go about um, my profit taking? So to get into that though, just want to recap all the different steps that we have covered. So we have step one, which is going to be that divergence at a liquidity point. So remember the S&P, the bodies did not go above while the NASDAQ, the bodies did go above. That's step one. Step two, we're going to measure the range from wherever we expect price to go to. So in this case, it was the low of the previous session all the way to that new high. Find 20 to 30 percent. That's step two. Then step three, we're going to drop down to a one minute chart, find a reclaimed order block or a breaker within 20 to 30 percent of the range. So we found that. Then step four, we're going to wait for, in this case, a market structure shift. But it could also be a change in the state of delivery. More about that in the course, right? So step four, market structure shift. We have that. The market structure shift has to happen in both pairs, though, not just the one you want to trade. So and that's why we have to look for it in the NASDAQ first. And then we went back to the S&P. So then after the market structure shift, step five is going to be the entry. The entry is going to be at and imbalance in this case is going to be a premium imbalance because we want to be a seller then step six which we're about to get into is going to be your targeting where are you going to get out right so my first target is always at that two to one risk to reward ratio so if two to one was right here or it has to be a minimum of two to one so if two to one was right here my first target is going to be right below this low which is why I closed the entire position here. This is where I would take my first target. My second target. So let's actually put target right there. So my second target is going to have to be in this case in a discount because we sold at a premium. So now we want to be at a discount. The way I'm or the range that I'm using is that entire range from the previous session low. So 50% right here would be a discount. So my next target would have to be below this low right here. Then my third target, my final to be at the liquidity point down here. So this would be my third target. So, and I just realized the other one went away. So target one would be right here. That would be in this case, a two six risk to reward ratio. So you get 2.6 more than what you put in. So if you put a hundred dollars in, this trade would give you $260. Next one, Next target would be a 4.7 
risk to reward ratio. So if you put $100 in, you get $475 back. Put $1,000 in, you get $4,700 back. So it's all scalable. Don't really focus on the money and the risk to reward ratio. Remember, the way I pick the targets is based off of the range. So that's why this target is just because it's a swing low that is in a discount. This is just the swing low from the previous session. It doesn't matter whether this gives me $1,000, $10,000, $100,000. It doesn't matter. It's all based off what's in price. And that is how we're picking our targets. The only reason why I always have my target at a two to one is because based off, based off of all back testing that I've done over the years with this model, it generally always goes to at least two to one. So it had nothing to do with the money. It's just based off of the data that I have that it generally goes at least two to one. That is why I have that as my first target. So we can get really crazy with the targeting. Um, and what I mean by that is we can start measuring standard deviations and stuff like that. So like we had this retracement from this low to this high right there, we can start measuring that. So from the high to the low standard deviation. So this is just measuring 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2 times this range. We measure that whole range and kind of like extend it forward. This is measuring, but we can also do it from the bodies as well. So we have the body of this candle right here to the lowest body, which would be down here. And then let's just make the color different. So now we can start looking for standard deviations that align with the areas of interest. So what's the first standard deviation that is below this low right here? So you can have a target right here. What's the first standard deviation below this low? Well, then now you can move this target to here. What's the first standard deviation below this low? Well, now you can either move your target to right here, or you can use the exact standard deviation that is equal to this low. So you could leave this one right here. And now, lastly, I want you to notice how the bodies of the low of the day, literally the entire, or my bad, it wasn't the low of the day, but the low of the session, notice how the bodies respect that perfectly. So remember, everything is algorithmic. It's all ran by algorithm. Algorithm only knows numbers. Nine. That's it. So notice how the bodies respect it perfectly. We have a deep retracement after. But also, remember I said the first standard deviation below this low would be this one right here, right? So now if we go out, look at where the low of the day is for me. It's almost perfect. It actually is perfect if we use the red one. So the red one is at 55.30 and the low of the day. So if we look up here, we have OHLC. O stands for open, H for high, low for low, C for close. So if I hover over any candle, it's going to tell me the open, high, low, and close of that specific candle. So just to remind you, the red standard deviation, so that was from the bodies, is at 55.30. If we scroll over, and zoom in the low of the day is this low right here and if we look up here the low is exactly 55 30. it is perfect to the standard deviation so nothing is random and i'm gonna leave you guys with that so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you guys in the next one